Well, hello, my friends. Here I am, still at the marina. But this time, hopefully, can show you something of what's going on. I'm going to take the camera with me. As you can see, I have two davits inside the boat. And you must be wondering, why in the world do you have two davits inside the boat? Well, a little bit of embarrassment, but let me see. I dream of sailing. The surveyor that we had on this boat did us no favors. We paid good money for a survey and we hired the surveyor because he is the expert. And he missed a lot of stuff. And in our rush to get this boat, we ourselves missed a lot of stuff. Well, the davits that were in the back of the boat were nice looking davits no doubt about it that's what it was like but on the way here on our first sail during the third night we encountered a good size squall heavy weather rough seas so the boat was doing a little bit more pounding of course that was during middle of the night so during all that motion, all that racket, the davit that was on the port side of the boat actually collapsed. The reason why it collapsed is because it had been altered. Somebody had welded with a wrong weld uh, the area and I will use the, the new ones that I got and point it out. It's easier than uh, showing up. Anyway, this area right here on the old one had been touched up. There was a crack on the aluminum, on the stainless steel uh, main bar. And there was a lot of stress in this particular area of the davit. So during the sail and all the movement on the back of the boat, this one over here that had been welded broke off. The stress was enough that it started pulling down on this arm and twisting it. So this arm down at the bottom where the plate goes into the transom, that snapped off and the whole davit bent. It's not this one, so it's a little different from this one, and I feel a lot better about this one. But this pipe bent a little bit, and the one that went down to the bottom of the transom completely bent, and the dinghy came all the way up here with the motor end dragging in the water. So I've been a little reluctant to even do a video about this because it's embarrassing. Now, I took it off and i contacted several welders about my situation brought it up designed it did templates all that stuff and you know basically people said yeah we can fix it for you so if you look at that one that bottom pipe over there that does that little hook to me that was a weak point so that bent over there pretty badly the pipe just to the left of it bent just below that cross brace and then the problem became at the top that stood intact from there up but at the bottom like i said where that bend is and that cross brace over there at the bottom uh that kinked down a little bit that and then the cross bracing on the top got sacrificed 
So, bringing it to welders, they said, yes, Al, we can repair it. And I thought for sure I had the exact idea what needed to be done, how easy it was going to be, but apparently it was not as easy as I thought it was. So, for three weeks, a welder held it in his shop, and to find out he did nothing, and he was just stalling, I pulled it out, I brought it to another welder, had the welder come to the boat, see what the original looked like, and he thought that he could fix it to, uh, to the way that I was saying. Then he talked to another welder that was next to him, that would probably be more capable, and it seemed like that was not going to be doable. But meanwhile, I had been eyeing these, this set, on Craigslist, and it was all the way in Marathon, and they were asking a pretty penny for it. But anyway, I figured that was probably my best bet was actually to buy these. They're not the same for the simple reason that this extra arm that comes over here is an extra support that will tie up a little bit higher on the back of the boat. This pipe is thicker. It's like a two inch instead of a one and a quarter that was on the other. Thing. And it's got a dual pipe on the back section of it. But these things were not made for this particular boat from it. I put it up and this arm would actually lean towards the water because the angle of the back plate was not correct for this boat. So I brought it to the I brought it to my job site and well first of all I did a template from the back of the transom with the curve that it had, what did I need? And I put that template up against this and I drew up as well as I could, more or less what the angles were. And I ended up cutting this about this much. So at the job site, I mean, I was going as careful as I could, uh, measuring different points, I cut to these angles and I was ready to drop it off at the weld shop. Good thing I didn't at the time, because I came up and I also bent these plates, by the way. Did it by embedding it on a, a bed of sand and taking a sledgehammer, five pound sledgehammer, and tapping it several times until I got this curve. And this curve matches up really well of the transom. But anyway, when I got it back over here and I hung it up in the back with lines, ropes, tying it up, hanging it up in the air uh, to get a feel for it, well, it was still leaning into the water. So I had to, not only that, it didn't line up exactly with the plate. It was close, but not a perfect lineup. So over here, I would go with a marker and cut my offsets as I saw until this started coming. I actually took off quite a bit off this top so it would tilt up and then you know of course cut from back here, cleaned out the, the welds and matched it up and hung it back on the boat, on the back of the transom, the way you see it right there with the plate and off and it's almost a perfect match to the other side on how it sits. It sits, which isn't uh, good, but this part up here, top of it, this top bar right here, probably sits three, four inches higher than the factory. So I feel really good about it the way it is right now. And it's really, uh, the marina doesn't allow me to do grinding over here. Which I have it right over here. I was doing a little cleaning up on this one uh, earlier today. And somebody from the marina came and told me that 
the Home Owners Association from the marina that allow you to do work on Sundays over here. So I put, uh, put a stop to it, but either way, I already had it done. So you can see what I got here. I got a pretty good mate all the way down on the seams, the cut. This is pretty close for stainless steel welding on this plate. And this one over here, I didn't have the chance because I was stopped. I have to grind a little bit more here. And this arm is slightly longer than that one. I have to grind this one down so it mates. Uh, but the angle is good. Everything sits. They're like twins, identical one to the other when they go up. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow and doing that. When the stainless steel welder is here, I had him pick up some pipe, stainless steel pipe for my bimney top. I have to reinforce this to put a hard top on the top of it. My thinking is that on this area right here where the helm is, I'm gonna have framed out to create like a, uh, a square so I can put a hatch type opening up there. I have to add this pipe that's only temporary but uh, put stainless steel pipe going there another line going on the inside frame it up that will do it for the uh, opening on the top and then I have to add additional supports not necessary to this middle because it will have that opening but from that little span this one and add the pipe going all the way down to the back Continue with this one going all the way to the back and this side do the same thing for additional support going all the way to the back to give me additional support for a heart stop. Now another embarrassing situation and I should have known better than this because I've been in construction a long time and I should know how things work with angles and all that stuff. The top on this is somewhat of a dome. It does a dome front to back, and it does a dome sides to sides. Well, we all should know that you can't bend a piece of, in this case, starboard. You cannot bend in the two directions simultaneously. You can make it bend one way, or you can make it bend the other way, but you can't make it bend both ways without making cuts to get off the excess material to make it go around that contour. And with starboard, it really doesn't glue together well, so it would defeat the purpose of me trying to do that and making all kinds of angle cuts to make it fall. And then the next piece would still be another problem because now you're trying to bow it and trying to mate it on a bow that's fighting in two directions would make it impossible. So I have seven sheets of starboard that I bought for this that I'm not going to be able to use. So the plan changes, like I said, is to the reinforcement, which were going to be there regardless of what system I used. Do that, put a quarter inch glue on uh, plywood up on the deck strapped to one and a half inch stainless steel that will be welded from the back as well so I can put a bolt pattern to it and then apply fiberglass to it and I will do it with uh, maybe three four layers of fiberglass and resin until I get a good amount of thickness that the strength is in the fiberglass and not on the quarter inch luon. Once that's done clean it up paint it and we'll see how that pans out and my thinking is that it will work out okay but still even with plywood it's not going to be as easy as that it will have some figuring out from what needs uh, to be done once I'm working with the sheets so I will see um, and you come back and see what the progress is going to be for the rest of the project. I apologize that I haven't been filming 
that much over here, but I felt like there were a few setbacks. You know, this was kind of an embarrassment. This is taking forever. Getting this, I was trying to get it coordinated at the same time. Whoever was doing the, the debit, welding the debit, was going to be welding the top. So all of this has been on hold until just now. Tomorrow, the welder should be here. We're going to weld these plates, finalize the little bit of grinding I need to do on this uh, this one, which has already been in the back of the boat, and it sat well. But outside the boat, I just see that it, I need to fine tune it just a little bit. So um, we will do a follow up with the welding of this and the fabrication of this. So that's the plans, that's where I stand. Now, all of this was cut. Surprisingly, it cut better than I anticipated. Being stainless steel, I figured that I was gonna go through all kinds of blades, um, and it wasn't too bad. The, uh, have all the plates over here in the bag, but basically I did all the cuts with metal cutting blades and because I did it at the job site and I was not at the boat where I have quite a few angle grinders I went to Harbor Freight $19 bought a, a cheap angle grinder and bought a couple of these flapper sanding discs and that's how I cleaned up only for the cleanup of the plates grinding it down and getting them to the point where it can be welded and then once I get it up I will buff all these scratches that are in place and clean it uh, clean the rest of it up and bolt it up so that will be happening over the next couple of days you can see this was a trim that I had to do over here and uh, pieces that were cut away with the first the blade getting it close enough and then the buffer to get the rest of them clean and they all clean with the exception of the ones that made the back this was the one that went to this pipe over here but this was I know why because this was like this and it had another pipe going from here to here so strength stiffening up this that's why the double double welds but anyway that was the one from up here that sit on the top will sit on the top lip and I did not clean these because, well, I have the round ones that came off the other one that will probably be a little bit more suitable than using this one up. And the idea of them coming up over that lip was really nice. I like that idea. And this continued over here. The only drawback with it is the fact that my traveler is over here and the carriage travels all the way to the outside of that lip so I did not have room to keep this going out this way which would have been a nice strength point but uh, no way for me to put that up without modifying my traveler and all that stuff and I don't want to do that so anyway I still might use these uh, because I can clean the, this edge up and I can feather this down a little bit with uh, another sanding disc so I will see whether if I use these or the other ones. Using these, this top lip will just help me go on uniform over the top edge, but not to encroach into the top edge, if you know what I mean. So anyway, hopefully these projects will be a little bit more on a regular basis, getting this boat ready to go out to blue water. As you know, some of you know, I already do have the generator in there. There will be more solar panels up on the top over here. Once I get the solar panels in, I'll bring an electrician in to wire up my generator and my solar panels and pick up a couple of uh, charger controllers to uh, work with this to help me out because electricity is not my strong point. I will do whatever I can, but... Um, especially this 12 volt system which should have been the easy part oh my goodness the fish are jumping around that pole 
Look at that. If you saw my last video, I talked about a, a big fish that keeps coming up out of the water over here. And I just found out through my neighbor over here what it is. It's actually tarpon. They come over here and I got a little history that was pretty interesting on the tarpon from Texas. They're ta uh, from Texas, by the way. But uh, yeah, on the base of that pole, they were just jumping out of there. I don't know if you got to see it. If I didn't talk as much, I probably would have focused the camera on there. But if I stood over here long enough, I'm sure that I would see the water uh, disturbance and this uh, fish that I talked about, huge fish that lives in this bay over here, coming up, um, the tarpon. I didn't know what it was, but it has a dual fin and it, they're big, they're big, coming through here. But yeah, for some reason they're jumping around that pole. Oh, they stopped. I'll be darned. Yeah, once in a while, you know, we don't see the actual fins, but we we'll just hear it. And then we see the, the ripple of the... Oh, the right there, right? Did you see that? I mean, barely moved. I didn't even see the ripples on it. Uh, it was uh, going very slow. Generally, it uh, disturbs the water a little bit more than that. I hope that uh, caught on camera. What are the odds? But uh, he will be popping up somewhere in this stretch. The thing is, you know, you're never looking exactly in the, the, the direction. You're looking in one way, expecting him to come up over here. All of a sudden you see his uh, movement further down, but you do get to see it for a split second of maybe the, the tail going under or, you know, the, you, you just catch it through the corner of your eye, but you do see it. It does happen on a regular basis. At least when we're out here, we see that at least three, four times during the course of the time that we're here. Uh, there's the fish jumping around that pole again. So hopefully the tarpon comes up again. But it's a gray, gloomy day. But this marina is actually pretty amazing. Some huge mega yachts over here next to me. I thought my boat was big when I bought it next to the boats that were around it. But when I got here and parked next to these other boats, it, it looks pretty small. And it, it's, it's a modern size. It's not a, a gigantic, it's not gigantic, it's no super yacht, but it's a boat that was, uh, was within my means and that I thought would suit as well. And I love the boat. I love the way she looks. I love the features that's on her. I love the center bow over here, the trampolines, and uh, yeah, if you notice, I got an AC window to one of my hatches over here to assist us with the AC situation while we parked here. So I picked up a smallest AC at Home Depot, got it running, uh, got it all ducked in, going into the place, and it makes it tolerable. Because uh, I can tell you, being stuck inside or even being out here with 100 degrees, it's not very comfortable unless you were to jump in the water. And that's not happening. So, nope, no sight of the fish. But huge, huge yachts. There was uh, one that pulled up over here three, four weeks ago. Uh, it was called, I think, Sea Wolf. It was an $11 million yacht. This thing was beautiful, but it was a power, a power yacht. Uh, but yeah, parked right behind me. And it was 
I think a 60 footer, and it was as wide as my catamaran, or just about as wide. And for, for you know, monohull yacht, that's pretty wide. There's a, a power catamaran down there, and just behind it, where you see the mast, just behind it, uh, is another catamaran, but it's a, a sail catamaran. Um, forgot what it was, but I think it's a Fonte Beju. Uh, nice catamaran, fairly new. Anyway, I think that's enough R rambling on this thing. Oh, one more. Uh, there's, there's endless, endless things for me to do. So I got to update my battery bank. I got six batteries in the boat for a house bank. And three of them are RCs that read fine when I did a test. Three of them are a different brand. I don't know what they are. And they don't hold, they have no, no power. When you put a draw on it, it shows as bad. So I got to update my battery bank. My dinghy, when I bought the boat, there were no tubes on it. The owner had these old tubes, but he promised me new tubes that he had ordered. And I still have not received them. So therefore, I cleaned those up and I put the run uh, strips that lock it up into the dinghy in place and I fixed some of the the holes but I still got a small leak on one side one half so once I pull it up out of the water I'll be able to patch it up because I know exactly where it's leaking at but I just can't do it with it down there uh, I need to patch that up get that running I need the battery banks I need the solar power the power being hooked up I need to look at a couple of the electronics on here like my radar making sure that that's working okay for future travels and um, and of course you know finish up all this uh, welding and fiberglass and that's what I need to do to get the boat completely ready for me for my adventures to come up at some time my adventures will start sometime next year in the springtime. For now, I knew this is what I had to do. Now, if I get it all done, I might pull up out of here and go on anchor uh, to keep the cost down because this is a mortgage, basically, uh, to live at a boat. There's the tarpon again. Missed it, but this time it popped out pretty good. But there's the ripples on the water. And there's the little guys jumping again. Yeah, this this fish in those waters. Look at that. Well, this is Alfred Taro signing off from Idos, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you very soon.